they probably suffered more than the me than the military would because the, the, they were old people and babies and uh, women were left, uh, their husbands were gone and they were trying to struggle on, get along on their own. And I've actually talked to people. Mm -hmm. We met, you know, face to face with some of these people so we knew what they were going through. For some of the um, survivors, what, these what kind of were bombed. What'd they tell you? Well, the one I remember in particular, and I'm just I'm talking about uh, civilians. I'm not yeah. talking about our military. And but I can tell you the reason I was there was because um, the infantry had sent patrols into these areas, like a reconnaissance patrol or something. And I went then in, in there in one of the patrols. Mm -hmm. And the city had just been bombed and there was a population of about probably 20,000 and uh, 20, 12,000 people lost their life in that bombing out of that general. What city? The, the what? refugees were left were living in, around the edges up in kind of on a high hilly part mm -hmm. and I talked to uh, some of the people that were left there the civilian, German civilians. Mm -hmm. And I remember the one man I talked to was maybe probably like a middle-aged man. And he said his daughter was downtown, which was where the damage was. And she was working in a factory down there. And she was in that rubble. No. And um, they were talking about what happened when the bombers came over. And um, and he said his daughter had been, um, I think she had been to the United States and got some education, and he was talking about his daughter. Well, I don't know if there's any way they could even recover the remains, because mm -hmm. they're all buried in this rubble, and the, and the fires are still burning, and the odor was just unbearable in there. And uh, so these people that we I talked to, the the survivors of that town, mm -hmm. and they were kind of in a daze yet. So, uh, I always thought about um, what happened to many of these civilians during the war, and that story is hardly, you don't hear too much about that, where you see civilians walking down the road, evacuating a town with their carts and their little kids riding, and maybe some of them have a horse, and some of them are walking and carrying whatever they could and I also thought where are these people going to find food and water and uh, and we'd meet these people we'd be going in into these areas and they'd be coming back out again because they were trying to evacuate before probably to get out of some of this mm -hmm. violence. So you couldn't do anything for them? There was nothing we could do for them um, if um, if we ran into homeless kids or something, if we had any rations so that we could spare, we'd give it to them, you know. Mm -hmm. We gave them whatever we could. If we had anything extra that we could get by without. And I didn't particularly care if they're French or Germans or they were to us, they were just civilians, mm -hmm. kids and old late women and men and babies and and I that's something that just stuck in my mind for Hmm. And then for all the homeless kids running around after the war in little bunches. And I, I remember we were stationed in um, Fort Sam, Germany, an old German army camp. And then we had a mess hall. They had a mess hall there. And we were using what the Germans used to use for their uh, camps. And uh, these homeless kids would would um, hang around uh, the mess hall when we'd come out of the mess hall and if we had a crust of bread or anything that was edible on a mess kit, they'd just grab it right out of your pan. And then they, whatever went in the garbage cans, and we didn't waste very much, you know. And uh, these kids would carry a little, probably a tin can with a wire on it or something that they'd carry whatever they could find and they'd reach over the edge of the garbage can and stick their hand down in there. Might be a little bit 
coffee in there, it might be all, and they pull it up, and anything that was solid enough that looked like edible, they put in a scam. And they were digging this out of the garbage cans. And some were probably 10, 12 years old, some smaller ones and some bigger ones. And there'd be a whole bunch of them there. And they were just plain homeless kids running around. They got separated from their parents during the war. Mm -hmm. And we gave them whatever we could. But, we, you know, the military was probably more rationed. We couldn't carry a whole bunch of food out of the mess hall and mm -hmm. start either. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, they could have let those kids come in a mess hall and eat all they wanted, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, <clears throat> later on, the army started rounding up these homeless kids. And um, I talked to, I didn't get involved in, in going out and running up, but I talked to some that were, and they said they'd go around in trucks and they'd spot a bunch of them. And they have to catch them on a run, because they're scared. Mm -hmm. They'd have to run out and catch them and put them in the truck. And then they thought for sure if the military grabbed them and put them down there, something's going to happen to them, you know. Well, what they did, if they took them to a center uh, for homeless, displaced kids, and then they fed them and took care of them there, and, um, and then the parents, would come there, and as one of the people that worked in there said that the parents would stand in the chow line or the food line when the kids went through to get their food. They'd stand there and watch to see if they could find one, some find their kids, mm -hmm. because they had been separated from their parents. And I don't know how long this went on, how long it took before, and how many of them were reunited, I don't know. But I know there was still some of the homeless running around for a long time afterward, maybe one alone. Because we had one that ate in our household, he's about 15 years old. He ate with the soldiers and he was caught stealing out of the warehouse. So he was arrested and put in a jail that the army had there, an old dungeon that they used for jail. Well, the jailer, he was a military man, I knew him, I used to go over and visit him sometimes at night. Mm -hmm. And this little boy had in it, probably 15. The, he, when, the jailer ate with us in the mess hall, he'd come up, it's parked across the street there in, uh, in uh, Verdun. And he always brought this little boy along to eat with us in the mess hall. Mm -hmm. And he probably, I guess about 15 years old, and I think he was German. But some of those kids spoke German and French because they were probably close to the border. Mm -hmm. But I think he was German. And he had no idea where his parents were and how long he'd been wandering around. Who knows? He got separated from his family during the war. Maybe his family were gone. Who knows? Well, anyway, he stayed there for a while and they really didn't know what to do with him. So then uh, they finally told him, he said, you've been in jail long enough. So we're going to turn you loose. So they turned him loose and then he left and then they said it wasn't long, it was late one night and this guy was taking care of that military prisoner, that old dungeon of the prisoner they were using. Somebody was pounding on the gate outside late at night he went out there to see what's going on. Here was this little boy and he said, me want to go back to jail, he said. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was getting fed and he had a place to sleep. Mm -hmm. So I guess he just, well, okay, come on in and you can find a cell you can sleep in and then he could eat with us. And uh, 